All right. Good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon to you. Um, depending on where you are in the world, listening to me. Um, here I am again, your hum my humble self, Chilean, um, coming to you not as a young man who has succeeded in life, but as a young man who is striving to succeed in life. And as I keep striving to succeed in life, I make a lot of mistakes, I make a lot of successes, and um, I learn from this, and um, I have made it my my vision to share the things I learn, you know, with the people I know, with our community, so we can all grow together. And like I always say, I have never listened to a pastor, I've never listened to a motivational speaker, I've never listened to a politician or whoever who is a public speaker, and I agree with everything that they say. That has never ever happened, never ever. So with that, I, I submit to you that I might say some things this evening that you don't agree with, please go ahead and throw it. But if I say some things that you think, hey, that makes sense, go ahead and apply that in your life and let's see the success and then we progress together. So this evening I come to talk to you about a topic that I caption, let your mind go ahead of you. I strongly believe that for anyone to achieve success in life, your mind always has to be years ahead of you. That means you have to be thinking ahead of where you are. Your mind has to be ahead and you should be running behind your mind. If your mind is ahead and you're running behind your mind, you will always be a successful person. You're always going to be making progress in your life. Now, here is my belief. Everything that you are today is a product of your thoughts yesterday. What you are today is a product of your mind today. That means I can tell you that if I look at your life today, I see where you are and what you're doing, I can tell you what you've been thinking for the past five years. Yeah. So if you are a medical doctor today, you are only a medical doctor today because you thought about being a medical doctor years ago. If you are an entrepreneur today, own a business that is successful, you only have that business today because you thought about having a business, talk, talk about a business years ago. So this, the summary of your life today is a reflection of your thoughts yesterday. My brother Nasako, who owns Toride, is going to attest to me that he owned Toride years before he bought the first instrument of Toride. He had already owned Toride. He had been thinking about Toride and so he owned this institution before the first instrument of Toride was ever born. So you see, companies are not born out of money. Corporations are not born out of money. Corporations are born out of ideas. They are born out of thoughts. I'll use my brother Toride because I'm speaking over his platform. I'll use this example again because it's a very practical example. Because sometimes we might use all these big examples of all these extraordinary men in the world. And sometimes we might not be able to relate to them. But when we use examples of our peers, it's better for we can easily understand that. So before my brother Toride established, my brother Nasako established Toride, he used to have an income. I guess he used to work a job that was giving him some money. And he was using that money to you know, just have some life, nothing wrong with that, buy some good shoes, some good shirts, uh, you know, and um, have some fun around, nothing wrong with that. But as life went on for him, a thought dropped in his mind that he could own a videographic institution, that he could own Toride. He kept thinking about it, he kept thinking about it, and then when the thought was fully matured in his brain, he used his paycheck. He used his, 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 his income to now purchase the first camera or the first equipment of Toride. And then boom, Toride began. Now, you would get it all wrong to think that Toride was born by that money that he used to buy the equipment or the capital he put in this business. No, that's not what Toride, that's not what gave birth to Toride. It was the idea. Because if the idea would not be there, that money that bought that first institution, um, first um, um, equipment would have been used for something else. So Toride was born out of an idea. So every company you see out there, Coca-Cola, you know, um, Amazon, Microsoft, <coughs> name them, they were all born out of an idea. And you see, big entrepreneurs that we know in the world today, have caught this concept and they chase after it. And that's why they would pay millions of dollars to buy an idea. 
they'll pay so much money to buy an idea. Now, many a times we'll think that the biggest asset or the biggest things that a company owns is the buildings and the cars that they have. Absolutely not. That's not their biggest asset. That's, that's, that's not their biggest asset. Their biggest asset is the ideas. Because do you understand that with those ideas, they can acquire lots of buildings. They can acquire lots of cars. So they go after to buy business ideas, other people's thoughts. Because they know that if they have those thoughts and they execute on those thoughts, on those ideas, they can achieve whatever they want. There is a company that I love in Dallas, in, in the United States. It's popular in the United States. I don't know, for those who listen to me who are outside the United States, you might not know them, but I'll explain it for you to understand. This company is called Uber. This company is operating almost 100% on an idea. So let me explain what Uber is for those who are listening to me from Africa, from other areas that have never heard the words. So Uber, it's, a, it's what we call a ride share company. So it, it's, it's a company that comes out to be like, anybody that has a car can use their car to do transportation and make money out of it. So what happens is that the company advertises and then gets people who want a ride and then you who has a car, you can take your car, go pick up that person, drop the person where the person wants to go, and then what the money that you make is split between you and this company called Uber. So Uber will get part of the money and then you will get part of the money. So this company is operating almost 100% on, on, an, on an idea. This company got an idea that lots of people wants to move, want to move from one place to the other around town, but they are not sufficient, sufficient public transportation to get them there. Not enough taxis, not enough trains, not enough buses. So they came up with this whole idea that they, oh, so many persons have cars. If all of these people can transform their cars into taxis, then we're gonna have more mobility around the, around, around the town and this need will be born. So they came up with this idea and all they had to make was an app that as a driver you can have on your phone as a, a, a passenger you can have on your phone. And then all they do is connect the person who wants the ride and the person who has the car so that the person who has the ride can go to where he's going. They are operating, they're using your car. I used to drive for Uber. They use my car, they use my fuel, they use my insurance, and they are making money. That is a business that is operating basically on an idea. Uber today is a multi-million dollar company. But about 95%, if I thought they have cars, about 95 of the cars that are applying those routes are not owned by Uber. And if they put Uber up for sale today, lots of investors will run to buy Uber for millions of dollars. What are they coming to buy? They're not coming to buy your car. They're not coming to buy my car. They're not coming to, coming to buy those cars that are applying those routes because those cars don't belong to Uber. They're coming to buy an idea. So that's how powerful an idea is. Our thoughts. I used to work as an accountant and um, oh, I cannot forget that experience. When it comes to the end of the month and we have to balance our records in the company, we will be beating ourselves, reconciling Excel sheets, make sure that every dollar, every penny, every franc or whatever currency you're using balances. I remember one month that it took me three hours I was trying to balance an account that was missing two cents. I got frustrated and I said, can I just go to my car and just get some two cents and put it here and let's close this books? No, it doesn't work that way. The two cents in my car wouldn't help me. But after all this struggle and we beat our heads and we, the accounts finally balances, we have someone who is called in the company chief financial officer. He comes and takes the records that we beat our heads for hours and then he go presents it to the board of directors and senior <laughs> management. And he gets paid more than all of us. He gets paid a lot more money. I get frustrated. I'm like, I can talk that same thing this guy is talking. And then they pay him more than us. This is not fair. But you know why they pay that guy more money? Because of the ideas he can bring to the table. He's paid for ideas. That's why CEOs, vice presidents, those top people in the company, they don't walk the walk. But they are paid for the ideas. They bring the ideas, we do the work. Companies have big corporations have understood this. I worked for another company that was called Fidelity Investments. When I worked for this company, they had something they call 
think time to think think time so every employee in the company was given 30 minutes a day where they are expected to lock off from all their systems and they were given notepads like this everybody had a notepad like this they said during this 30 minutes please stop working just sit down and think and any good thoughts you have write it on the paper think the job you're doing right now how can you do that job better what can we do to improve our department what can we do to improve the company? Do you know what it means for thousands of people to stop work for 30 minutes? Do you know how much productivity the company is losing? But Fidelity Investment doesn't, did not look at the productivity they are losing. They knew that the value of the thoughts they can get for 30 minutes would outnumber that productivity they are losing for 30 minutes. And I could see how our departments were transforming, they were improving, we we're finding better ways of doing the work we're doing, things we need to do in 30 minutes, we do that now in 10, 15 minutes, because they give time for people to think. You see, big corporations like this have come to understand the power of thinking. No wonder the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so he is. As you think, that's how you are. Do you know one thing? The quality of your life is dependent upon the quality of your thoughts. Your thinking life determines the quality of your financial life, your family life, your career life. If you want to improve your financial life, every aspect of your life, improve on your thinking life if you can do that i can guarantee you that your life is going to transform so i think i've buttressed enough on how important it is for you to have a healthy thinking life and why your thoughts should go ahead of you why your mind should always be ahead of you because that's where lies Success. But I think the biggest question you might be asking yourself, all right, all right, children, you just mentioned a problem statement, but can you give us a solution? How can we cultivate a healthy thinking life? So I put down four points that should help you to, to cultivate a healthy thinking life because that's what your life depends upon. Number one, you need to, you need to have a 30 minutes of undivided thinking time a day. Everybody needs to have this. Just like you're going to have 30 minutes of devotion, spiritual time every day, every human on earth needs to have at least, 30 minutes might be too small, if you want to make it one hour, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, but you need to have some time every day where you have undivided thinking. Get into your room, close your door, no distraction from your kids, no distraction from your wife, or your, your spouse and just think trust me if you practice this daily you will be amazed at the kind of ideas that will be born just take the time think about your business my brother and I said, can take the time think about Toride what next for Toride if you can have 30 minutes every day what next for Toride you'll be amazed at the ideas that will come. Big ideas are not found in the surface. It takes good thinking to come up with big ideas. So have a 30 minutes or a dedicated thinking time every day. That's number one. Number two is, like I said before, is think forward. Think forward. A lot of us get trapped in our current success. Yeah, you've achieved right now. You are now an IT engineer. Now you own this business. Now you are this, now you are that. You've achieved that. Great job. You should be thinking about what next. Stop celebrating your current success for too long. If you need to keep making progress, then you need to continue. Your thinking should be what next. Great job. I achieved this one. Good job. I got it. This is great. Now, what next? Don't get trapped in your current success because if you get trapped in your current success time will come and catch up with your current success and your current success will now be failure 
Samsung is never going to st st stop and just be celebrating the good phone they have produced because if they stop and be celebrating the phone they have produced, Apple will run ahead of them. Think forward. The next is that you need to surround yourself with like-minded people. People who also have a good thinking life. You know, there are friends and there are close acquaintances. I have many friends, but they are not all my close acquaintances. Your close acquaintance, just like Jesus Christ walked this earth, he, he had so many disciples, but he had 12 apostles, his close acquaintance. You need to have close acquaintance. Your people that you guys talk often should be people that are going in your direction. People who have the same thinking habits like you. People who are thinking like you. Those are people that will help to develop your thinking life. The third thing is, the fourth thing is, take action. That's also one big secret to improving your thinking life. I was reading, I, I heard somebody said this about Amazon. Then I went to say, okay, let me go and research about Amazon because I usually don't like to talk about what somebody said, but I like to do some research about it thinking about Amazon and I came to discover that Amazon began like a bookstore that's what it were a bookstore that is shipped out books to people an online bookstore that's where they began that's 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 the first idea that Jeff Bezos had an online bookstore and he started acting upon that idea of an online bookstore and he opened one and as he's taking as he took action on that and continues to develop that uh, and going to develop that taking that action and action then the thoughts begin to come out more clearly what if we extend this to an online clothing store what if we extend this to an online shoe store what if we extend this to an online jewelry store and now amazon is an online store that sells almost everything. And they haven't even ended there. They extended the vision into IT. People now have online servers, which is called cloud computing, AWS, that people go out for. Now you can sit in your house, I can sit here and I have a server, and the server is not inside of this room. Online server. But it began from what? A bookstore. The thought or the idea would only get clearer and Clara as she go. God said to Abraham, leave your father and your mother to a land I will show you. He did not show him the land. But as he kept going, he had more visibility. So those are the three things, the four things. So have an undivided thinking time, think forward, surround yourself with people, like-minded people, take action. But let me leave you with this one quote. And this is my original, I didn't borrow this from anybody. You can never get to a place where your mind has not yet been to. If you live abroad today in the United States, in Europe, your mind had already lived in that country before you lived there. Your mind lived there, and because your mind was living there, then you said, okay, how do I get there? You applied for lottery, or maybe you applied for a school abroad, or you sought an invitation, but guess what? Your mind went there first you can never get to a place where your mind has not yet been there and if by chance you stumble and get to a place that your mind has not yet been there a couple of things would happen either that place will kill you or you'll not make good success in that place or that place will leave you in a state that is worse than you were before you got to that place i've seen one thing in the united states the most sorry to use the word lazy and unsuccessful immigrants in the United States are those who were brought here by their parents. Maybe they were 14 or 15, their parents were already here, they brought them here. They don't appreciate the opportunity they have. But those of us who were fed up of living in the countries where we're living and saw the condition and we didn't see a future and we said, we see ourselves out of here. I need to make a way to go abroad. And we fought our way by school, by lottery, by whatever means, and we got here, we make it far. We, we, we go farther. Again, you can never get to a place where your mind has not yet been to. And if you stumble into that place by chance, you might not make much out of it. Thank you so much. I hope this was helpful. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.